Well, welcome back to another video. This time, we're doing the big one. It's the Reading and Leeds 2021 vlog. It's taken me a little bit of time to put this video together. A few reasons. Number one, I, I own and run a business now, so sorry. I then went on holiday with some buddies, literally the week after Reading, weekend after Reading, and all in between have just been huge festival blues, like horrendous, horrendous festival blues. God, I've never had them this bad before. But what a year this was. I can't believe how good Reading and Leeds 2021 was, bearing in mind how how long it's been and how like bolted together it was and it really felt thrown together at times. But I, I honestly, I've come away with some incredible memories this year and had such a great time with my buddies. So this vlog is me trying to go through and patch all of the footage I managed to get together because there's lots and I did a sh job of speaking to the camera again during the festival. Sorry, I was actually going and enjoying myself. My bad. So standard procedure. This whole scenario starts on the drive down south to Lauren's parents' house. My, my partner's parents' house. Just outside of Reading. Oh, we are heading south, boys and girls. Heading south from the great north. All oh, right, the journey has begun. It is Tuesday at 2.22. Uh, heading down to, I'm going far too fast. Heading to south to, towards Reading. The, the car is loaded, as I'm sure you can see in the wide angle shot here, with eskies and chairs and tents and sleeping bags and all of the goodness. Here's the secret. Here's the shopping essentials. Don't do it until you've set up your tent. There. Take that as, there you go. That's the secret of, of, of winning at music festivals. I know, getting all excited now, really. We've got, uh, what, this time tomorrow, Hopefully the queue will start moving and we'll start to get wristband exchange. I spent my morning this morning listening to loads of Girl in Red. Like, Sunday night, I'm well excited. After going through the uh, the Clash Finder and realising that I don't have to get up and stay, spend all day in the in the arena feeling like shit, and we can just chill for a few hours and then go back out later on, I feel much better much much better uh tomorrow morning will's gonna join me we're gonna get the train into reading go get go in just with our tents secret is going first just with our tents once we've got in with just our tents we can then come back out again to go get all of the rest of our bits and bobs all right i'm gonna take, go back to my podcast because um i don't know why i'm telling you this you gotta have some karaoke on the way right and standard what i decide to do is go, right, I'm gonna be drinking for the next like five days, so I probably need to take tonight easy. Uh, my father-in-law likes to get me very drunk and I can't help it. So I woke up on Wednesday morning with a pretty relentless hangover. Will arrives and we go straight into Reading really early and straight and hit that queue. You didn't like it. Time before the storm. So yes, we are right. They're all still setting up fucking queue. So we're gonna, it's what 11:30 now. 11:33. He's saying after 12. So hopefully the queue's not too long. Get our COVID test done. Get in. Get camp, camp set up, and then I want a beer quickly. Yeah, this bit's a little laborious bit, I'm afraid. But we're nearly there. When you queue, the only thing you need to take in is your tent. Like, just take your tent and chair if you want to sit down in the queue. But honestly, like, a tent is is literally all you need. All the other stuff is fine. Queue is going to be relentless. This year, we joined the queue a lot further back than I anticipated. Then I remembered they were doing an extra stage of COVID checks. So, 12 o'clock comes around. Let people through the COVID pass. We moved like, I don't know, 20 meters forward and then stay for another two hours. Now, usually what happens is you queue and then they open the gates at two. They check your early entry. They check your ticket. You go in. Happy days. This year, obviously they had to do the COVID pass as well. So what they did was checked everyone for the COVID pass and let them wait for two hours and they couldn't let anyone move. It felt very annoying to have to do two lots of queuing. And usually like there's a little barrier. This was like a full on. So I, I didn't enjoy that at all. Perhaps I'm just getting too old. But that queue is f***ing shite. It is not fun. I say this every time. Next year, nine o'clock, get in early, go sit at the front. It makes all the difference. Anyway, we get through. The queue's like three to four hours long. It's a pain in the ass. We get through, we get our tent set up, we find our spot. We're set up in, what, 15 minutes, probably? Half an hour, So It doesn't take long to put up a tent if you know what you're doing. Here's the tip, guys. Put your tent up before you go. Know how it goes together. Otherwise, you're gonna be getting angry with each other. And I saw so many people getting angry with each other. Also, if there's someone that's getting angry with their friends because they can't put the tent up, give them a hand. Nip 
back out, go pick up all our stuff, come back in. Now usually, usually the way this works is, we do our first run, we do our second run, and then we do a Tesco's run. This year, I couldn't be f***ing at Tesco's. Too old for that sh I don't want to do that. It's too much stunning around and waiting and carrying, and that walk down that river is just... I'd done it twice already that day, it was enough. So, we did our shop in the co-op this year. It cost a little bit more, but saved us hours of our lives. Absolutely brilliant. That co-op on site is the best thing that's happened to Reading Festival in the last 10 years. The best thing that's happened. Going and getting all of the all of the stuff on site is just an absolute blessing. It's like a four minute walk. You queue a little bit. The prices are like, what, 20% more probably, but the time you save is great. The ice you get is still cold. And if you've got a decent call box, that makes all the fucking difference. I should probably do an essentials video. I should probably do an essentials video. I should probably do an essentials video. That being said, the problem with the beer on site is that you have to drink Carlsberg and Carlsberg is f awful in this country. We go and get all our bits, we go back to the campsite, we sit down, we get far too pissed, we drink loads of beer, we have a little fire, we go for a little walk, we have a lot of fun. Wednesday night, simple, nice and easy. But as always, decide to go and walk into White Camp. Why do we do that every year? Ah, I remember. Here's the thing. I wanted a beer from the bar, so we went and found the bar and then turned up that we were in orange and we were like, is it quicker to go back to green or should we go to the bar that's on the map in white? And then we got to white and the bar wasn't there. Do you know how much of a piss take that is? There's no bar in white, even though it's on the map. Come on, guys. You're not, you're not doing me any favours here. I'm going to have to camp in white in the next few years because I'm too old for this shit. And there's no bar there? That needs to change. It was a very sunny day on that Wednesday. A very sunny day. Look at how burnt Will's arm is in this next clip. Bro, I think they put this bridge up just this. Look how well we're lit. Yeah, bro. We're always so piss walking across this bridge. Yeah, you are sunburned as a motherfucker. <laughs> Look at that. So well lit across this bridge, though. I'm sort of handsome, motherfucker. That's a good name. Anyway, head back to the camp, have a fire, hit the hay. We're all good. I sleep so well, so well at Reading. Like, I don't know why, but I always sleep so well. Anyway, we get up early Wednesday, do the, the standard movements, look at the decay of bodies that's around that are trying to cope with life after camping for one night, after taking drugs for the first time. That being said, young people on drugs this year. Perhaps I just didn't notice it as much, but it didn't seem like it was as big as it was in previous years. 2018 was by far the worst. I blame you, Drake and Travis Scott. Standard procedure on a Thursday, head into town, met our buddy Cam, who was joining us for the weekend, and we went and sat in the Three Guineas, which is the train station pub, and had a fair few Guinnesses, and had a little wander around town, the bits we needed before heading back into the site. Bit harsh. Seeing people arrive at this time is hilarious because it's so busy and they're like, where, am I gonna, where are we going to camp? There's no space anywhere. So heading in a Wednesday is always the right decision. And if you've got buddies joining you, just take a tent for them. Some standard procedure, uh, showing Cam around the site. It was his first time at, at, at Reading this year. Um, first time at a big festival, in fact. So coming and camping with us was uh, a good lot of fun for him and a bit of an experience. And just as he arrived, the neighbours started playing volleyball with each other over the tents. <laughs> Kids. You're hilarious. And then it was just standard, let's go get a drink. I needed a drink, have a little wonder. Went to co-op, went to go get some bits, some more ice, some more beers, top up some more, all of the essentials that we needed. Head back, first person spots me and says, hey Jack, I like your videos. Fucking love it when you guys come up to me and do that. Makes you feel like a right celebrity. Who the fuck is Jack? <laughs> Look at that fucking absolute wannabe gangster. So all of you on who the fuck, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. That's sick as fuck. You're sick as fuck. So don't do that because that's wrong. Yeah, yeah. What? Do you want me to look at the view, yeah? Alright, we'll have a look, won't we? We'll have a look. Oh, you fucker. It's actually, it's actually pretty sick. Do you want me to show you? Yeah, have a look. I time lapsed the sunset last night and it was fucking amazing. Anyway, it's sort of thing. On a Thursday, they start to open the arena. So we head into the arena to show uh, Cam round. This is where we are. This is what this looks like. Head into the group of people that are, that are singing in with her. Oh, we'll go and join in with that. And it felt very Brexit Britain very quickly. Uh, we went and got some food, went and watched King Kong, and then went back to the camp. And nothing happened after that. We didn't go back out and drink more beer. We didn't go on a little excursion around the campsite doing very inappropriate and, and, and bad things. Nothing happened after that moment. 
So we're now into Friday, day one of music. Uh, the most important part, the bit we're all here for, really. We start heading into the arena um, after some, some good green juice and some good bits to get us going for the morning. And the queue starts. Now, here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. I don't mind queuing. Like, I'm British. We're good at queuing. Like, it's a, it's a, a superpower of ours. Nothing but thieves are on at 5 past 12. So I thought, let's leave at like 11.25. That's 40 minutes to get in. It's there. Like, I can see the dance stage from where we're camping. I know it's really close. And we head in. There's a queue. And I'm like, okay, cool. They're just letting people in. Okay, cool. We're there for 10 minutes. Mm, not. It's not moving. It's not moving. It's not moving. It's not moving. At 5 minutes to 12, they decide to start letting people in. That is isn't good enough like that isn't good enough used to be that open it at 11 so that you can go in get some food go to the toilet use the toilets chill out whatever blah 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 at this point i'm hungover and i need a beer and i'm tired and i'm bored of queuing so we get in check out the main stage west go watch uh, nothing but thieves which sounded okay moved around a lot it was very patchy depending on when you stood it was very 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 different compared to other stages where it's pretty good there are certainly sweet spots um but that main stage west was very patchy the secret is go and find the sweet spot and stay there the whole weekend because you know it's always going to be good so i went and had a little look around there before we decided to go get our first beer of which i had to queue again first bar eight people working on it there should be at least 30 people working on those bars like again another queue i'm getting old and moany i know i'm sorry but it, i was just pissed off so anyway nothing but these finished we head over to go watch Inhaler, who were f***ing brilliant. Absolutely, those guys are going to come on to be one of the, they're going to be massive. Their debut album is probably going to go into my album of the year category. It's just teetering at this point. I need to listen to it more. But as an album, amazing. As a band, they're really exciting. I'm really looking forward to see where they go on from here as well. Album two, new new records, new tours, so on and so forth. I think they've got a real big future ahead of them. They very much could be the next 1975, I think. You know, in like six or seven years time. And you can totally see us if you go and watch the, uh, if you go and watch the clip on YouTube of uh, whatever it was my honest face you can definitely see the back of my head We then headed straight over back to Main Stage West to go check out Sports Team, who fucking outrageous. So good. And I think I already spoke about the sound on this stage. This stage, again, there's a few stories of this across this day. This is the start of it. We head over, they open with fishing, and you can very clearly see Al playing drums here and not hear them. And it's like, really? Okay. And then the string snapped when they went to go play a record. I can't remember which one it was, so they didn't play it. <clears throat> but all in all, played an amazing, amazing set. Once they fixed the sound, then they got it all working. It was great. And, and Alex is just such a charismatic musician. I think it's all about Alex's, like, skip across the stage. <laughs> Full on climbs the stage, so fun. They're such a good band. I can't wait to see what they're having for album two and where they continue to go. I think they could headline one day, definitely. Yeah, big time. Who's having tonight? Like Catfish in the Bottleman? Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if they're, if they're headlining, it seems pretty achievable, doesn't it? So we start to get a little bit of a gap and, and this is where the beauty of the alternative stage comes in. Because you can just head in there and go and have a laugh. Literally go and find a comedian. Just so happened that that gap was where Reginald D. Hunter was playing. Perfect. He was so funny. I wanted to go for a beer with him afterwards. So we then head over to the main stage to go with Declan McKenna, who, wow, pulled an audience, number one, and wow, put on a show. So 
good. Declan McKenna was such a shocker. Um, I knew that he was great and I knew that he had a good following, but goodness me, was that, that that was big. Like, he's really talented. A real, real highlight for our weekend and certainly for the Friday for us. Also, I don't know what this song is, but it's, I, I've heard it. I always thought it was Phoenix, but it's clearly not. <laughs> And then it gets announced that Frank Carter's doing a secret set on the Festival Republic. Oh, sorry, on the pit, the FR tent, you know, the little tiny tent. So we head over to the Festival Republic stage, which is the pit or the lockup, and caught a little bit of, what's her name? Dana, 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 Dana Dentata, who was scary as f Uh, at one point she says, oh, my new album comes out next week and I've birthed it from my vagina and then had like a baby with two heads hanging from her crotch. It was f***ing weird. F***ing weird. And there was like a guy in a gimp mask watching. It was f***ing weird, man. Anyway, Frank comes out, puts on an amazing show. But it's on an amazing show. Just brilliant. Anyway, we only got to court, catch a little bit of it because I love Frank. You know I love Frank. The man puts on a show. We're big fans of Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes on this channel. You can go watch his WTF video and watch how much I love Frank Carter. Very excited for his new album. But we're here, we're excited to go and see Sam Fender. <laughs> And we head over, we go in, right to the front, and fucking hell is that man talented. Fucking hell. And he was excited as well. So, Sam Fender smashes it, we go get another beer, we try and locate Evo, find him, we go back to watch what I thought was so excited to see of a Catfish in the Bottom End set, and I was so f***ing disappointed. I was so f***ing disappointed with Catfish. And the reason I was so disappointed with Catfish was because it didn't feel like they wanted to be there. If you're just going to turn up and play a gig and not talk to the audience, then why would I f***ing turn up and watch you play? It's the interaction, that's like, we're all there, we've done f***ing solitude for the last 18 months. We're here together, watching music together, it's an interactive piece, the band has to communicate and do things special that's live and I just felt like they didn't want to be there. The rumours of them breaking up, I was always like, whatever, they're just rumours. I, I don't know if what more has happened. I read something about some company's house letter or some bullshit. They didn't want to be there. Or what was going on was that they were just pushing through. They didn't look at each other or get excited or they, there was n they were headlining Reading Festival. This is the biggest gig of their fucking life. There was no emotion from them whatsoever. Fucking robots on stage. <laughs> And that is not what Catfish are about. I've seen them play a million times. They are not about that. And I was just so gutted by it. Until they spoke about playing on the introducing stage, right at the end, before they played Seven. And all of a sudden they started feeling better and everyone got a bit more excited and it was more of a connection. And But if you're just gonna have to come up and do tune after tune after tune after tune after tune. The last time I remember someone doing that, Art and Monkeys did that, I remember. But you kind of expect that, that's what they're about. Or just very little bits of speaking to the audience. But Kings of Leon did that in 2009 and they got fucking bottled off because they were shite and it's famous because they were shite i love kings a little don't get me wrong so we then head over to the main other uh, main stage to go check out stormzy who what is the headliner i mean he is the headliner the man is just an absolute g and will go down in history as the headliner you get the boss the governor the headliner stormzy is the headliner that's his new name storm the headliner z that's what his name is bringing out dave was a real highlight 
having all those people on stage as well that was that was such a cool thing to do i've no, never seen that before like it was him and his backdrop was just his mates like hundreds of them it was brilliant also bringing out like tion wayne and, and russ millions for body was was a fucking great as well <laughs> i mean it's one of the records of the year isn't it absolute massive a, a real a, a real amazing moment to see Stormzy headline. I think probably should have headlined the Sunday to close the thing out. But Friday works too. And you know, energy crew's important when it comes to Stormzy. Anyway, that's the end of Friday. I'm gonna bring you Saturday and Sunday in a separate video because this is just, it's too much to do in, in all in one. And you know, I wanna keep everyone engaged and enjoyed. And uh, if honestly, I wanna drag out Reading 2021 as long as possible, because it was so good. It was so much fun. Did you go to Reading this year on the Friday? Did you go to Leeds on the Sunday? I wanna know what your highlight was on that day, because for me, it was such a good day and i love so much of it seeing sam bender was a real highlight declan mckenna absolutely smashed it uh, sports team were brilliant you know just so much that was just so so good so 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 good let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always and i'll see you in the next one cheers bye